Here we're going to look at a problem which I've heard called the world's hardest easy geometry problem. And what I mean by that is it's got a very complicated solution, yet it only uses elementary results. So let's look at the setup here. We've got this triangle A, B, C, and then we have this line segment B to D. And now notice that D is on the line segment A to C. And BD is constructed so that we have an angle here of 60 degrees and an angle here of 20 degrees. And then we've got a line segment from A to E. And E is between C and B. And AE is constructed so that we have an angle here of 70 degrees and an angle here of 10 degrees. And then finally, we connect D with E. And our goal is to find this angle here, X. So let's see what we can get started with that's pretty easy. So first we notice that 60 plus 20 is the same thing as 70 plus 10. And so both of these angles right here are 80 degrees. But that's going to make this thing an isosceles triangle. And in fact, we know that the opposite sides will um, be equal in length. So in other words, AC is going to be equal to BC. So maybe that's the first thing that we'll notice is that triangle ABC is isosceles. And in fact, um, what we'll use from that is that AC equals BC. OK, great. Now, the next thing that we can do, which is pretty simple, is fill in some of these angles. And um, we can do that using the fact that the sum of the angles of a triangle equals 180 degrees. So notice that we know that this is 80, and then this is also 80. So that adds up to 160. And so that's going to make this angle up here 20 degrees. And now we've also got a triangle here, ABE. And now notice that this is 80. And this is 70, so that totals 150 degrees, which is going to make this angle up here 30 degrees. And then we can do something similar over here. So notice here we've got an angle of 60 and an angle of 80. And so that's going to be a total of 140 degrees. And that makes this angle right here 40 degrees. OK, and then after that, what we want to do is construct a line going through D, which is parallel to AB. And so we'll say that other point over here is F. So I'll put a line segment here. We'll call this point here F. And we're going to have DF is parallel to AB. So let's maybe go ahead and notice that. We're going to construct um, DF, which is parallel to AB. Great. And then from there, what we want to do is connect A with F. So let's do that with a line segment. And we'll call the point where AF um, intersects DB, we'll call this point G. So we've got a point here which we created G. And then finally, we want to construct one more line segment. And that will be the line segment up here from C down here to G. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got this line segment here, C to G. So that's going to be another important line segment to consider. OK, so let's point out what we did over here. So we constructed DF, which is parallel to AB. We took G to be equal to the intersection of AF with uh, BD. That's one thing that we did. And then we also constructed CG, that line segment. OK, so the next thing that we want to do is notice that we have the following. So this tri triangle up here, CDF, is similar to the triangle CAB. And so that's pretty clear because these two lines are parallel. So from that, we can see that this line segment here, AD, is congruent to this line segment here, BF. So that's one thing that we want to notice. AD is congruent to BF. Great. And another thing to notice is that angle DAB is the same thing as angle ABF. Those are both 80 degrees. So let's write that down. So angle DAB is equal to angle um, AB. F. And then finally, something that's pretty trivial, which is line segment AB is congruent to itself. So here we have line segment AB 
is congruent to itself. And so now notice we've got two triangles which have sides that are um, congruent and angles which are congruent. So we can use the side angle side theorem. So use SAS. So that's going to tell us that triangle ADB and triangle AFB are congruent. So great. So let's go ahead and write that down. So triangle ADB is congruent to triangle AFB. Okay, good. So now we can use this congruence of triangles to calculate angle B a G. So it looks like in the picture that this is 70 degrees, but recall that 70 degrees is angle B A E. So notice angle B A G will be equal to 80 minus the angle D A F. And that's clear because this entire angle is 80 degrees. And what we're doing is taking away this part. So here we have this is 80 minus angle um, D A F. Okay, good. But then we know something about angle DAF because of the congruence of these triangles. We know that that is congruent to angle FBG. So let's look at this FBG. So we can just write that down. So this is 80 minus angle FBG. But it's given that angle FBG is 20 degrees, so we have that this is 80 minus 20 or 60 degrees. So we've got angle BAG is 60 degrees. So let's maybe add that in here. So this whole thing is 70 degrees, which makes this little thing here 60 degrees, which makes this thing here 10 degrees. Great, so now we've partitioned this entire 80 degrees into 60 plus 10 plus 10. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that part of the board and then we'll get on to the next step. Okay, so now we're going to construct another set of similar triangles and we can do that in the following way. So first of all, we'll notice that angle CAG, CAG, so that's 10 plus 10 degrees, so that's equal to 20 degrees, but that's the same thing as angle CBG. So here we have, this is angle C. B, G. Okay, good. And then another thing that we know, which is kind of from an earlier calculation, is that A, C is equal to B, C. And that's because the big triangle is isosceles. And then finally, we can have this trivial fact, which is C, G is equal to itself. And so that's going to give us, uh, by SAS again, the congruence of two more triangles. So we have triangle CBG is congruent to single triangle CAG. So by SAS, like I said, triangle CAG is congruent to triangle CBG. So let's see what we have. C a G so this triangle right here and then C B G so that triangle right there okay great so now what we want to do is use the fact that these triangles are congruent to notice that that means that angle A C G is congruent to angle B C G so let's go ahead and write that down so angle A C G is equal to angle B C G. So that's new from the congruence of the triangles. Good, but we notice that those two angles sum to 20 degrees. But if those two angles sum to 20 degrees, then each one is equal to 10 degrees. So let's maybe add that in there. So here we have this angle right here is 10 degrees. This angle right here is also 10 degrees. So now we're going to make another SAS argument for the congruence of two more triangles. And in this case, we're going to notice that, uh, first of all, we have the angle ACG. So that's equal 10 to 10 degrees by just our recent calculation. And then it's given that the angle C. A E is also 10 degrees. So that was given at the beginning of the problem. So this is also equal to angle C A E. So both of those are equal to 10 degrees. And then furthermore, we have angle C A G is 20 degrees. So let's write that down. So C A G 
is also 20 is 20 degrees and that's also equal to this angle c b g so let's write that down as well so c b g so we've got two pairs of angles which are congruent and now we can make a trivial equality of sides and the two sides that will be equal are ac with itself so in other words, AC with itself. And again, by side angle side, we have the congruence of two triangles. And those two triangles are triangle ACG and triangle CAE. Okay, so let's look at that. So triangle ACG, so it's this one over here with triangle CAE. So let's look at that one, CA with E. Good. Okay, so now that we've established the congruence of triangle ACG with triangle CAE, we know that we have the congruence of the corresponding sides. And the sides that'll be important to know that are congruent for us are AG with CE. So let's uh, notice that here we have side CE is congruent to side AG. So let's just look at that real quick. So here we have CE and a g so those are corresponding sides from the triangles that we have so shown to be congruent so that's actually really important so let's go ahead and save that up here we'll say that c e is congruent to a g okay so the next thing i'll do is clean up this and then we'll go on to the next step okay so the next thing that we want to notice is that since here we have a 60 degree angle, here we have a 60 degree angle, we know that this is also a 60 degree angle. But then it's easy to see that the opposite angle is also 60 degrees. But then we know triangle ADF and triangle BDF are uh, congruent by an earlier calculation, which makes these two angles the same, but that's gonna make those two angles equal to 60 degrees. But now we've got a triangle with three 60 degree angles, which means that it's an equilateral triangle, which tells us that all three of these sides are the same. In other words, DG is the same as GF, which is the same as DF. So let's uh, write that down real quick. So here we have DF is congruent to DG, which is congruent to uh, GF. Okay, the next thing we wanna notice is that angle CAF is 10 plus 10 or 20 degrees and angle ACF is also 20 degrees, but that's gonna make triangle CAF an isosceles triangle because we have two equal angles here, but that makes the opposite sides of those equal angles congruent. So in other words, we have this side CF is congruent to this side AF. And so let's just go ahead and write that down over here. So we have AF is congruent to CF. Okay, so from here, we wanna use the fact that AF equals CF and CE equals AG to notice that FG is the same thing as FE. So let's go ahead and look at that real quick. So CE equals AG, so that would be this line segment here and this line segment here. Okay, good. But then we also know that AF is equal to CF, but that makes the remaining pieces um, congruent. So in other words, from this fact right here and this fact right here, we see that FG is congruent to FE. Okay, great. But then we know that this is an equilateral triangle, which means that FG is congruent to DF, but that means that DF is congruent to EF. So let's go ahead and write that down. So DF is congruent to EF. But that makes this triangle right here, DFE, an isosceles triangle with equal sides DF and EF. But that means the angles opposite those sides are also equal. So notice the angles opposite those sides are FDE and FED. So notice that's going to tell us that angle FED is congruent to angle FDE. Okay, good. But now notice that angle FED and angle FDE are both equal to X plus 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and write that here. These are both equal to X plus 30 degrees and that's because they're congruent and FED is X plus 30 degrees. 
So now the next thing that we can do is use the fact that the angle sum of the triangle DEF will be 180 degrees. Now two of those angles are congruent, angle FED and angle FDE, and they're both equal to X plus 30 degrees. So if we add those two together, we'll get 2X plus 60 degrees plus the remaining angle, which is DFE. So let's put that down, angle measure DFE, that needs to be equal to 180 degrees. But luckily we can calculate angle measure DFE pretty easily, and we can do that in the following way. So we know that here we have a straight line, AF, but that's gonna make the remaining part of this angle um, 100, and 20 degrees because that sum needs to be 180. And then furthermore, because the angle sum of a triangle is 180, we have 140 from these two angles. That's gonna make this 40. And then again, because this is a straight line, we know that this entire angle measure is 180. But here we have 60 plus 40 is 100, so what's left over here is 80. So in other words, angle measure DFE is 80 degrees. So we have this here is 80 degrees, but then that's gonna tell us that 2x plus 60 equals um, 100 after subtracting the 80 over, but that's gonna tell us that 2x equals 40. In other words, x equals 20. So what's the measure of this angle, which was our goal? It was 20 degrees. And that's a good place to stop.